Well, I think I think we can go ahead and start it the way we always start it with nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and welcome everybody to the Deb and Bob Show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. How's it going, everybody? That that's right, Devin. I I took the easy way out tonight. You turned that around on me, you some bitch. I know. I I'm, I'm good at that. So is if this is your first time listening, this is the Dev and Bob show. We talk about video games. We talk about some of the stuff that we're playing outside of YouTube. And then we also have a channel highlight series. So in that channel highlight series, we have a master speed painter. Of... <laughs> you guys saw that. <laughs> so a master speed painter. And his name is Boonshire. Boonshire, welcome. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me on your show. Glad to be here. I got to tell you, I <laughs> laughed my ass off when I saw your intro video. Yeah. I just did. I don't know what I expected. I should have expected what I saw was Microsoft Paint. I should have expected something, you know, <laughs> like that. And I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but man, it. I mean, I actually, actually laughed out loud. Bob was on the line with me when I was watching it, so you can vouch to that. So it's it was- it's an Overwatch, right? It's of an Overwatch. Yeah, it's character. a it's a tracer tracer fan art speed painting that I made. Yeah. So if you're listening, look up Boonshire. He's in our channel description. He does. It's amazing. I don't think I've ever seen somebody speed paint as fast wonderful. as this guy does. And it was absolutely you, masterful. You didn't add any, um, you know, s- speed increase to that when you when you rendered the video. Did no, you? that was uh, that was real time. Yeah. That's, actually, that's actually how fast my hands go. It's amazing. So check it out, Boonshire. You, you are in the his channel is in our description. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what your channel is beside this besides this amazing um, Overwatch speed paint that you did? What, 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 what is my channel? That is a great question. Uh, well. It used to it used to be like a lot of gameplays and let's play stuff, but I I kind of got all rid of all that. And now it's kind of just anything that I want to do. So I have a lot of it's just like anything that comes to mind, I just put up there. I try to keep it all gaming centric because I like video games, but it's I I mean I have a video about me talking about VR and even a video of me talking about an an encounter with some weeaboos in the public. Uh, I haven't, I haven't really, I actually haven't posted anything in like two weeks and I feel really bad about it. But like, <laughs> I have, I've been working on, I've, I'm actually, I'm actually just renting a video right now. Uh, so, and I have, I'm working on like five different videos. So my, my, right now my channel's kind of random, but it's, it's all gaming focus. So there, there's at least that. It's random in a good that. way. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. I was I was gonna say because like I have I was gonna try I was trying to do this uh, Pokemon series about the Fire Red Nuzlocke randomizer and uh, I thought I thought it was gonna be crazier than what it is, but it, it's it's kind of boring, so I kind of scrapped it. So <laughs> I guess um, now I'm unfamiliar. What's the Nuzlocke randomizer? It's like randomizer. Uh, it's uh so there's a uh, the Nuzlocke challenge. It's it's two things. The Nuzlocke challenge is like is for Pokemon is um. It's kind of like Pokemon hard mode is you you start off you you can't the the main rule is that like you 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 release any Pokemon that die and you could only catch the first Pokemon you see in each new area. So that combined with the with the randomizers is uh so like all the, everything all the Pokemon are randomized and even the items and even the legendary Pokemon. So you never know what you're going to get like in my in my in the the video I did uh it took me four tries to get past the first battle. So <laughs> That sounds the, fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then I then it like I don't care about spoiling the video. And then um and it took me four tries and then I finally got I got a Moltres as my starter Pokemon. I'm like, finally a great Pokemon. <laughs> I can finally start the game. So yeah, it's it's uh I don't know I don't, I don't know, know if I want to continue is. it though. That's uh that's it's kind of a uh, I don't know man. I don't know any of what you just said is at all. It's all like, Pokemon. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you ever played Pokemon? No, I actually haven't. That's one game that I've okay. never played. Seriously? Yeah. I mean, I grew up with the... Uh, I had a Sega Game Gear, so I never had a Game Boy. Oh, here are one of those Oh, look people. at you with your fancy <laughs> LCD screens. <laughs> what are those people? <laughs> You know, we shouldn't even be on this podcast, man. We're like, we're a bunch of plebs, Tim. 
<laughs> so, man, that that made me so sick, though. So I got it for my birthday one year, and uh, uh, I got Echo the Dolphin. I don't know if you guys oh. ever played that on, on Sega, but I had it for Game Gear. And that game's dude, great. It's a great video game. It made me fucking so sick. Like, I threw up for like a day from just that. <laughs> God, jeez. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was very bad. Um, See, I'm I'm older, and the Pokemon games were kind of past my time, and I discovered them in college. Uh, I a buddy of mine had them, and he was he was younger than I was, living in the dorms, and uh, I I fell in love with them. I've played a, a bunch of them. I'm really wanting to try the uh, Pokemon MMO that's I guess running around on the internet right now. Is it Pokemon MMO? Yeah, it's dumb. It's like a fan project, and of course. Uh. Typical, like, Nintendo fashion, anytime anybody mentions a fan project they found, Nintendo finds a way to shut it down. So, if you're wanting to see this, you've got, like, one week to find it before this video goes live and Nintendo goes and hunts them down. Yeah. <laughs> which is which is pretty normal. I mean, Nintendo is kind of like the Gestapo of video games, so... Yeah, they don't, they don't like people touching touching their stuff. Like, hey, these are these are my toys, don't touch them. Well, what? to be fair, they got burnt pretty fucking hard when they let Phillips make some Mario and Zelda games. Hmm. Oh yeah, that is well, that is very true. When to it, be fair, it, too, I don't like people touching my stuff either. Yeah, or else they'll make you know the Super Mario Brothers movie or the Zelda CDI. Well, <laughs> okay, that's where we're going to disagree because the Super Mario Brothers movie was amazing. <laughs> I was like eight when it came out, and it, and it was awesome, I, right? Fucking loved it. I loved it. Damn straight. I don't I mean, care what it, anyone says. I was about that age too, and it had, you know, John Leguizamo. He was funny. That's when he was funny and did movies. I don't know if he uh, does. Does he still do movies? I think he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think he <laughs> fucking died. <laughs> um, I, I could see that, actually. Oh no, he's not dead. He is very much alive. He is fifty-one years old. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember the the other Nintendo movie about that time, The Wizard? Oh yeah, yeah. The Wizard. This the, that's oh. the one with the power glove, right? Yeah, that's the one with yeah. the power glove and the the so rad kid. And um, they had gameplay footage of Super Mario Brothers three before it came out. It's basically a giant commercial for Super yeah. Mario Brothers three, <laughs> and I bought it hook fucking line and sinker man i was so sold on super mario brothers 3 after seeing that movie why have you never seen it no i have but why just what about the movie everything about it they told you that there was like the secret whistle you know thing in the in the first <laughs> castle and i can remember waiting for the game to come out or for me to get a copy of it just so i could do what he did in the movie and nice. it's a great, it's a great movie, man. It's got Fred, it's got Fred Savage. You can't Christian Slater. Oh my god! Bridges. Oh my god! Christian Slater was in it. I'm gonna have to fucking yes. stop this podcast right now and go watch it. <laughs> it was an Academy Award movie that got hardly over, unfairly overlooked. It was. It's an Academy Award winning movie that nobody liked except you. Except me. <laughs> I've I've never seen The Wizard, but I know about it. Like. The, the Super Mario Brothers movie and The Wizard are past my time, but or before my time, not past my time, <laughs> because I'm a very young person. <laughs> but I've, I've seen the Super Mario Brothers movie, and uh, it was probably one of the... I saw it when I was eight, and it was, it was probably one of the first movies that I watched and thought, and actually thought, wow, this movie is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually bad as in like, dude, that's bad. Oh, that's Is bad. It? Oh, yeah. I thought I forgot. I was eight. I was like, damn, that's bad. Shit, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we we kind of glossed over your channel a little bit. I kind of want to go back just a, a little bit. So what's uh, it's all about a Super Mario Brothers movie and uh, The Wizard. I know. It's all my channel is at this point. Nice. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to become The Wizard. All wizard. wizard all the time. I like the sound of that. Nice. So, go, but yeah. Uh oh. Oh, I was going to say, I was gonna go pick a power glove from my local <laughs> uh, thrift shop. And <laughs> nice. Do you have a thrift shop there? 
Oh uh, yeah, I have so many thrift stores. <laughs> it's all it's like it's where it's where I get all my clothes and Christmas presents. They're very convenient. Nice. Nice. Right. Uh, what were you gonna say about my channel? Uh I kind of derailed what? it. Yeah, bit. no, that's totally cool. Um, which one, I mean, one video that you want to highlight for everybody besides oh, the speed shoot. painting? Uh, I guess the, the Tracer speed painting one, but you said besides that one. Huh. This is a very hard... <laughs> I mean, I guess the Pokemon one, the Pokemon Fire Red Nuzlocke randomizer. That one's... That one, I think that's a pretty great video. And I nice. might continue the series, so... Uh, you know, highlight that one. Cool. Yeah. So everybody go check that one out. Um, again, his, his link is in the description. So let's go ahead and uh, play that bumper into Stuff You Play. Stuff You Play! So again, thank you, Golem and Goblin, for that little sound bite. Um, so, Boonshire, we did have all of our guests at one point sing for us. I feel wow. like I feel like you would be a guy that would want to sing for us. I mean, what what what, what do you want me to sing? It depends what you want me to sing. No, I'm uh, just kidding. Any anything uh, before 1990, I don't know. So, <laughs> and anything past 2005, I don't know either. So, I'm I'm totally kidding. I don't want you, don't want anybody uh, to sing for us anymore. I mean, <laughs> unless you really want to, unless you feel like somebody wants to drop you a beat and you you want to just go. But other than that, we'll go ahead and not do the singing part. Yeah, I'd rather not do the singing part. That's fair. I don't want to. I don't want to come off as a as a terrible individual and kill everyone's eardrums with my voice. <laughs> or eat their souls. He he does eat their souls, people. So watch out. Um, but yeah, so the stuff you play. That's the section. So if you're new to the show again, that's the section where we talk about a game that maybe we're not highlighting on our channel, or Boonshire is not highlighting on his channel. So as always, we will start with our guest, Boonshire. What is a game that you want to bring up for everybody? I mean, Overwatch is pretty amazing. Uh, it's a little indie that? an indie title that you guys probably don't know about. Uh, <laughs> uh, how do you spell uh, that? It's, uh, it's I think it's I think it starts with a B. B, okay. but it's 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 like French or something, so, Boobs. something stuff like that. But no, seriously, like that game has sucked me in, like. And I, I can I can't stop playing it. Like I feel bad when I'm not playing it. Like <laughs> it hurts. I, I'm in hurts. the bathroom. It's like shit. I could be playing Overwatch right now. Why Who's am I not main? doing that? Uh, main? I don't. Well, I mean, I guess Lucio because he's kind of the uh, the one I because no one apparently no one likes being a support. So I kind of just I kind of just like get pushed into playing Lucio. But like jokes on them, I fucking love playing Lucio. He's <laughs> an amazing hero. <laughs> I have run into that in every game that has a support role I've ever played. I love playing the support role. Yeah. Well, you can't um, be the hero. It, it's so much more engaging than than being like the carrier or a defensive player or something like that. Well, but you always get the upvotes at the end of the game. <laughs> but you can't you can't be the hero if you're a support. Doesn't. I don't want to be the hero. I, I I I am very happy knowing that I helped my team win by giving some high quality and timely heals or crowd control or something like that. It's it, it makes even simpler games like Heroes of the Storm more interesting if you're playing a support role. Yeah, the, so, the supports are the unsung heroes of any video game. Like I main support in uh League of Legends and no one I mean no one complained about me not doing my job because I was always doing my job. You know, I was carrying the team from the shadows. You know, you can't you can't win a game without a support. Are you a big yes, you big lol fan? Hell no! <laughs> hell no, motherfucker! I mean, I've I've played it since beta, since like 2009, but I, maybe three years after that, I played it like on and off, and I only play with uh, five man teams with friends now because soloing that game is just terrible. Just it's the awful. worst thing. <laughs> yes, the game is ugh. I hate it. This is why. This is why I'm so glad Overwatch is out because. It, it finally gave me like a team-based competitive game <laughs> that isn't complete cancer. Like, <laughs> I also play a lot of CS:GO, and just, Overwatch compared to CS:GO is just 
infinitely better for me. It keeps my salt levels a bit lower. So <laughs> you're one Sad, Sadly, though, it's only going to be a matter of time before uh, the trolls take hold of Overwatch. Yeah, once well. uh, once uh, competitive queues come out, and uh, I'm and I'm going to queue up for those. I'm going to be a, a salty Sam. Once again, <laughs> get good, noob. Get, get good. Get yeah. get good. Get good. Yeah. Please don't. Please don't do that. <laughs> Just don't do that. Um, but yeah. So I, I've tried the beta. Is it something I should buy? Boomshire? Is, uh, is that what you're saying? If you like team-based shooters, then it is definitely something you should buy. But if you like the beta, you're gonna like the game, though. It's, it, it, it's people. People say that it's like, oh, it's not, it's too expensive. It's only it's multiplayer only. No, it's it's definitely worth the forty dollars or sixty dollars if you're on console. It is definitely worth it. Nah, nah, bro, it's worth forty bucks. Um, yeah, so it, it it's on my radar. I don't know. I'll have to somehow talk my wife into buying it for me. <laughs> I was I was gonna get it, and it came down to that or uh, Total War Warhammer, uh, and I which... I went Warhammer. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I listened through the last podcast. Oh, okay. Yeah, it it's such a fucking great game. And it, it there's so much replay value in it. I, I can't see myself getting tired of it for a long, long time. Have you uh, played the other Total Wars? I have like it. Shogun? It's my and, first. Because uh, I was going to ask if it's if it's the same. Because I, I liked playing Total War Shogun, but I don't really <coughs> care about Warhammer because I'm not really that huge of a fan of it. But I do like the fantasy setting. Like I'm the, not... I'm not a fan of, of Warhammer either. It was the fantasy setting that, that yeah. uh, kind of pulled me in. The one thing I did see in some reviews that I read was that um, compared to the Total War series, uh, your heroes actually do stuff because you can they fight and you can collect okay. um, armor and weapons for them. They've got they're not just there for buffs for your armies. Mm-hmm. Also, the fact that it's a fake place. Uh, they got a chance to really have fun with the map. You know, there's mountains, you know, chiseled out to look like skulls and lava all over the place. And, you know, deserts next to like lush green valleys because, you know, you don't have to actually worry about it being set in Rome or, you know, Japan or wherever it's set. It's, you know, it's, it's a fucking fake place. You can make it whatever you want it to be. Yeah, I, I saw I saw screenshots and gameplay of it. I'm like, wow, that looks amazing. I should probably buy it. And I, I don't have money right now, but I'm probably going to buy it eventually. <laughs> yeah, looks that amazing. was it for me. It was like, I can play Warhammer, which I know I'll have fun with by myself, or I can play Overwatch, and I'm going to have to try and find some friends somewhere that want to play it um, and find time to set aside to play with them. So I want Overwatch, and it'll probably be the next game I get, um, but Total, Total War won out for me on that one. Totally, bro. Totally total, total war. Totally war. God damn it. <laughs> totes, totes my goats, bro. All right, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to go home. Um, yeah, so Overwatch is definitely something I want to look at. And uh, I just don't I don't have the time to play a new game. So, And that will lead me into Devin. What are you playing this week? Well, I picked up a hum- Humble Bundle a couple weeks ago, and I've when I've gotten, you know, 10 minutes or so that I can waste, I've been checking those games out. And one of the games in it was uh, the remake of A Boy and His Blob. Uh, I guess it was out for the Wii U before it was um, out for anything else. And it's, the art style is really cool. I, I love the art style on it. It's, it's, a, it's a very cute game, um, very kind of heartwarming um, animation. Uh, not too hard. Um, so if you're looking for something you can kind of just plug on and play without having to to use your brain, it's I think it's a great game for that. Nice. Yeah, I've so, uh, I've played Boyd in his in his blob before, and I think WayForward is doing did the uh, remake of it, and WayForward made uh, Shantae and like all those games. I fucking love WayForward as a developer. Like I love all their games so. Yeah, definitely uh, now, pick up Boy with Boy with a Blob. I, I wonder if the bundle I got was Wayfair, because Shantae is another game that's in there. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. Uh, play play Shantae. I mean, if you get past the fact that everything's a girl and has jiggly bits, 
It's <laughs> like if you just look at the animation and like the, the gameplay is fairly easy. It's pretty basic, but the game the games are beautiful as hell. Like the pixel animation and like the art style is amazing. Devin, you love jiggly bits, don't you? Yeah. Who who doesn't love jiggly bits? Yeah. It's, jiggly bits. Jiggly jiggly bits are. I think that's gonna be the title. <laughs> who doesn't love jiggly bits? Yeah, jiggly bits. So, Devin, did you play the original um, Boy and His Blob on Nintendo regular? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, I did. Man, that game was fucking hard. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's pretty ugly. <laughs> the remake is nowhere near as hard. Well, is that because it isn't? So I feel like every single Nintendo game was stupidly hard. Well, you have to understand they were coming. The people who were making those Nintendo games came out of an environment where you design games to eat quarters. So the the games were designed to be harder on on purpose. They were also geared towards teenagers, you know, and they the kid thing was kind of a, a new market for for video games and it took them a while to start kind of dumb dumbing things down and making it more accessible to everybody. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, plus like these old games like especially on the NES there wasn't much you could do on it. Like you couldn't make them like super long. So to like mass the fact that these games are so short, they made them super hard to to, to increase the, like the longevity of the games. But you could you could like, also say that the internet wasn't around then either. So you had to either buy the guidebook or the if it was in a Nintendo Power or something to be able to understand it because you didn't really get the full picture until. You tried to you tried it yourself. So you'd spend hours upon hours trying shit by yourself, and if that didn't work, good luck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't I didn't hear anything. Yeah, said. Bob, you kind of died out there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Is this better? Yes. Can yeah, you, so you hear me now? <laughs> so why don't you, instead of just repeating everything, sum up what you were saying? Um, Devin sucks. Oh. Yeah, okay. I can see how that. I can see how it's you true. Think that. Yeah, it's true. That's fair, and I, I don't know what happened. I mean, maybe it's this uh, voice meter banana that screwed it up. But it, it was essentially the fact that when you had a game back then, you didn't have the internet to Google how to do shit, or mm-hmm. you you had to buy the guidebook or the Nintendo Power or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Well, we got we would spread word, you know, so like through. The kids that actually their parents let them call the Nintendo hotline, they would then <laughs> take that tip that they got for something like Metroid and they Fucking would pass it to their friends at school and then they would pass it to their cousins who would pass it to their friends at school and eventually it would make it way to your ears and you'd be like, oh, cool, that's where that thing is. And you'd go back and play a game you've been spending playing for years and try dude, again. Dude, the Nintendo yeah, but- hotline was such a scam. <laughs> I begged my mother to let me call the Nintendo hotline and she just flat out refused every single time. Now here's the funny part. You want to know what I wanted to call them about? Boobs? Jaws. Why? That game was so terrible. Because I, listen, I rented that game like six times because I knew that there had to be some way to play it. I was like, there's got to be something to this game that I'm missing. And I would rent it and try and figure out, get, wrap my head around what exactly I'm supposed to be doing. And I, I never did figure it out because my mother wouldn't my, let me call the Nintendo hotline. My mother, my mother wouldn't let me do it. Damn it, mom. Damn it, Jesus. mom. God. Damn it, mom. Fucking moms. Yeah. yeah. Moms are I, terrible. I had no way. idea what you guys are talking about. I, I'm a very young person. So. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> In the way, way back, in the long, long ago, before the true, true. Um, <laughs> I hate you for you, that. <laughs> when you want, needed to know something about 
like how to play a video game, you only had three options. There was uh, these things called magazines. Yeah, and I know about like I just know what <laughs> Nintendo Hotline was. I know, I know about guides and book guides and word of mouth. So <laughs> I'm not, okay, I'm not well, that. Nintendo, Nintendo Hotline was a 800 or a, a 900 number you could call, and they had game pros. Like there was some operator in the other end with like a book full of like all these cheats and secrets and stuff. And you could call them and say, so I'm on the eighth or I'm in the eighth dungeon of Zelda. Uh, I don't know how to beat Ganon. And they would say, well, you need to find the silver arrow. And then they would charge you like $3 for that. (laughs) Yeah, it was bad. Imagine having that job. You just sitting up in a, in a room. It's like, wow, I have, my job is great. I could do this for the rest of my life. And then, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> coming to the, then the internet happens and then the internet happens and everybody I lost my died <laughs> the virgins of the world no longer were virgins is that yeah, how the saying goes I, I, I don't know I've never heard of that say <laughs> yeah, totally just yeah you, you lost good. me with that one too no it's pretty good though obviously so <laughs> How do how do we recover? I don't know. Uh, so, is someone seeing <laughs> seeing Devin quick, damn it. Uh not not on the spot. I have to build up to it. Not not today, my good friend. So, Devin, while you've been playing a boy in his blob, and which is a retro esque game, uh, hard to say because it was for the Wii was it for the Wii U or the Wii? It was for the if Wii. it was for the Wii, it got I think it was for the Wii U. But if it was for the Wii, it got redone for the Wii U. I mean, the graphics are there. It's beautiful game. I mean, yeah, it's, the it's Boy in the Blob is an game. NES game. Yeah, well, but the right. the remake. Uh, oh. He's trying to figure out like how old it is. I, I it's new. It, it I think it came out yeah. like last year or maybe the year before that for the Wii U, and then maybe last year for for PC and I, I think PlayStation as well. Right. So I've been playing an oldie as well. So one of the first MMOs to come out, I, I started playing again. So Devin, while you and I are playing Elder Scrolls Online, um, I am playing <laughs> an old game. I want to say it came out in the 90s called Ultima Online. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Ultima Online. It, it was... <laughs> It was bad. Um, I mean, the game itself is not bad. I guess I shouldn't say that. But the... Um, the graphics haven't changed. So I'm playing Ultima Online on a free shard. It's called abc.uo or abcuo.com or something. I don't remember. But it's a free shard. And so what that free shard means is they give you the game for free. They let you play for free. And the good news about this shard is that um, you can really do whatever you want on there. And by whatever you want, I mean there there's no limits to, to what you can do. And, and that's basically it. So you, you literally can level your guy up 100 in all, in all you know skills. And I've been playing that for like three days. And it's so much fun. <laughs> It is so good. I can't remember um, the last time I did play. It was probably three years ago. But I always come back and forth to, to play games like this. Um, Boonshire, sounds like you've had some experience with it. Yeah, I I used to play it a lot when I was a, little, a wee lad. Because my, uh, my friend's <laughs> dad introduced him to it. And then he introduced me to it. And I used to go to their house and play on their computer. Because I wasn't allowed to play that game at my house. Nice. But, <laughs> That it was. It's pretty great. How are the uh, how are the servers now? Are they pretty healthy? Or um, so it shows you how many people are, are online at one point. Mm-hmm. And on this shard, there are twenty four people. Dang, that is not <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> Which is crazy. Don't go there expecting to make friends. Yeah, exactly. And um, <laughs> all the people that I see. Are, so I've seen about 10 people that are just running around. But all the other people that I see are um, people that just like sit there and summon portals to like a vendor shop or something. Mm-hmm. And so it's just hilarious. That's like all there is. <laughs> um, but it's fun. I mean, I have a good time playing it still. So. so 
let me ask you, I've never played it. Um, are, are you enjoying it because of the nostalgia or is there still something to it that's fun? Like, like RuneScape for me is still kind of fun. I'll yeah, jump I in know. every once in a while and play that. Is Ultima the same or are you kind of seeing it through your rose colored glasses? Um, both. I, I want to say both. So Ultima Online was one of the best role playing MMOs you could do. So back when it was EA published it, um, I don't have the date, I'll look it up sometime here in a, in a minute, but EA published it and they had the server, so it was like 10 bucks a month. Um, and you could have like seven characters or something. I don't remember how many it was, but you there were like 40 different shards. A shard was just a server. And so with all of those servers, you could um, you could you could make seven different characters per server. And so each character could only have seven skills. So with each seven skills, um you had to specialize in something. So you could be a fighter, you could be a mage, you could be... You could pretty much be anything. So, yeah, it looks like the game actually came out by Origin in 1997. So it's pretty old. But you could be anything you wanted, and it was so fun to roleplay in that game. You could... You could be a poisoner, you could be a treasure hunter, you could be somebody that all you did was make leather or make armor... And that, that was pretty much the entirety of the game. You could be a hunter in a dungeon. I mean, there were dungeons that you could go to, go fight the final boss there and get a bunch of treasures. But that's it. And, dude, it was so much fun. I don't know, Boonchai, if you had the same um, experiences I had. But me and my brother used to play, and we would spend hours. I remember the first time. So your skills went from 0 to 100, and it took forever to get to 100. Yeah. And the, that's, that's where my, my love for grinding in video games came from. Uh, well, and the funny yeah. thing is, when you got like four or five skills to 100, that means every skill after that, so the more points you had, the harder it was to gain skills. So there was points where you would just be grinding for hours because you... You had to. I mean, that's the only yeah. option. And you would gain, like... So I remember playing, like, four hours one night, and I gained one point. It was just oh, like, my God. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, I, well, I never grinded like that in uh, Ultima, because I never had the chance to get that high. But I did do that in RuneScape a lot. Like, I, I spent, like, maybe a whole week trying to get my level 99 uh, wood chopping c- cape in RuneScape. <laughs> Damn, that was, <laughs> that was yeah that was that was that was a waste of time but at least i was at least i didn't have anything better to do <laughs> yeah ultima ultima runescape and what's that thing called ragnarok online were like the three games that i played when i was when i was younger so yeah it's like yeah that's you're you're, you're pressing some buttons you know <laughs> some nostalgia buttons yeah absolutely it was i mean it was bad I play. I spent way too many hours in that game, um, but it, it was fun. I, I mean, I had a good time. So I might give it a check out. Yeah. Well, I sent you the link. So yeah, you did. A- AVCUO.com. It has terrible graphics, and it, it hasn't really scaled with computers. So a lot of new games, you can set the goddamn resolution. The resolution max in this is 1024 by 800. Nice. And so that's irritating to me because it's so small and you kind of have to squint. So since I have two monitors, or 1024 by uh, 768, so because I have two monitors, I make one normal size, 1900 by whatever, 1440 or whatever, and then I make the other one the size of the game so I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a good time. And I probably won't do video of that because it's so boring. For people, I might. I actually might. Yeah, it's, just, it's just a video of you just clicking on things like, <laughs> "Hey guys, it's, it's, I'm still grinding." I'm, I'm grinding. Off. I'm killing <laughs> harpies. I've killed it's, it's 400 harpies. Yeah, but no. In this one, actually, in the shard that you play. Sorry, I guess I forgot to say that. In the shard that you play on, there's no cap and there's no um, penalties. So the higher you get, it, it's still just as easy to gain. 
So they want you to have the end game content rather than the grind. So that's what makes it nice because you can get to the end game faster and you can have one character that does everything. So, and they don't care if you sit there and macro. So macroing was a big thing in UO. (laughs) And if you got caught, you were banned. You were put in jail. I hated that. I used to to macro a lot (laughs) because I was so lazy. But But you you had better make sure you're near that damn keyboard. I don't know. <laughs> I just happens. like because it's like you you if you if you macro you just leave the room for a bit and just come back. Just, it's like oh hey I went up a level cool I'm gonna go <laughs> to the bathroom again and maybe get some food. I used to macro but, hiding and I would put a stapler on my F2 key <laughs> and that did it. So, but now they have a they have a cool thing called Razor and so Razor is an outside app that lets you record steps. And so I record using the skill um, hiding, and then it'll then I'll put a weight in there. So you can only use a skill every ten seconds, and so I'll put a weight in there for ten seconds, and then just it can loop it, so I don't have to, I can walk away for hours and not have to worry about it. <laughs> that's that's how you that's how you enjoy the game. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a yeah. really awkward conversation to have with your wife. She comes up to the computer and she's like, "What are you doing?" And you're like, "Don't touch it." Don't touch the quarter. Don't touch anything. My guy's walking in a circle. Dude, I, I've done that shit. I used to tape keys down. Man, it was bad. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I can remember uh, in the early days of WoW before you got mounts or anything like that, running across the map and just <laughs> sticking a quarter on the, the walk key and like taking a rubber band around my keyboard and keeping the quarter, you know, depressed yeah, on I, whatever key I needed it on. Yeah. I, I use that. I did that too. I had, I had, when I was, uh, when I first played wow, I had a, a rock that I used <laughs> to put on my <laughs> W key. <laughs> I, I think I still have that rock. Actually, it's somewhere in my room. Nice. Didn't they? It has, it has my initials and everything. <laughs> when did they enable the auto run function? Cause wow now has that. <laughs> I think like Cataclysm or something. Oh <laughs> no, it was, it was a well. I played during vanilla, and then I I stopped, and then I played again during uh, Burning Crusade. So I think they they might have added it like somewhere in uh, Wrath of the Lich King because uh, vanilla WoW is it's uh, vanilla is shit. pretty pretty bare bones. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing in there to help you at all. <laughs> Yeah. But that was what was so great about it. Yeah, that's, that's it. Like, what I liked. Yeah, that's you, why I, you, I like playing. Nost- have, you, did, have you played uh, Nostarius before they shut it down? <laughs> I did not. I'm new oh, to. So I'm, good, I'm just dude. getting back into PC gaming after like 20 years of doing nothing but consoles. So, in fact, Burning Crusade was probably the last time I played a. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, played a PC game until like January this year. So I had just found out about the vanilla server right when they shut it down and i was yeah. like oh um, you're fucking kidding me i could have been playing <laughs> vanilla wow <laughs> yeah so i mean yeah i i, I miss mmos it, it, they were so much fun and when i actually had the time to sit there and grind um but that's going to do it for stuff you play so let's go ahead and go to the topic we only have probably eight more minutes real quick and so the topic tonight is a story so this is a little bit late the story leaked this last week of no man's sky getting delayed for Six weeks. So, six weeks. <laughs> right? So Those bastards. Yeah, right? how dare they make this game better? I know. And it, it's even even just saying it is so freaking ridiculous why people get upset. <laughs> but so K- Kotaku leaked it and Polygon leaked it. But the funny thing is, when they leaked it, they started getting death threats. And so did Sean Murray, the, the developer, he started getting death threats for six weeks. So it's not even that the the game is delayed. It, it's how sad is our culture that people get death threats because they can't wait six goddamn weeks for a game. Ugh. So we'll start with you, Boonchar. Um, just real quick, we'll, we'll touch on it. What are your thoughts? And, and I mean, not just on No Man's Sky getting delayed, but our... I'm pretty sure we're all nerds or geeks or whatever, and we all play video games. But how freaking ridiculous is it that people are doing that? I know, it's kind of this, like, internet culture, you know? Like, something happens, something that people don't like happens, and people jump on this hate bandwagon, and, and it gets, like, pretty ridiculous. Like, people just... I, I swear, people just need to, like, calm down, but I'm pretty sure the people that are actually giving it that threats... They're, they're, I'm, 
they're empty death threats, that's for sure. But I think they might be coming from like younger kids that uh, don't really know how to act on the internet because uh, I mean you can kind of tell by their wording of like some of the the actual death threats that they showed, and it's like that thing with uh, you know the with when Jimmy Kimmel made fun of uh, YouTubers or Let's Players and such, and he oh, got yeah. a bunch of hate comments, oh, yeah. and uh, and all of them were from like people telling him to kill himself and <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, it's 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 it comes from like people just not knowing how to act on the internet and that kind of that anonymity thing that it's 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 easy to tell someone to kill himself if they don't know who you are but people really do need to calm down because this people take this seriously like that yeah. is you don't you don't send a death threat that's that's just messed up I agree. that is too far well the thing the thing that i take away from it one um the death threats and all that bullshit, it's a vocal minority. It, yeah, it's you very know, vocal think, minority. <laughs> yeah, think about how many people read that No Man's Sky was getting delayed six weeks and went, oh, shit, guess I got to wait another six weeks for it. And then just moved on with their life, went back to work, went back to studying, went back to playing games, whatever they're doing. And then there's this like this fraction of a fraction of a percent was like, fuck those guys. I wanted that game and, you know, six weeks earlier, like I'm going to send them some fucking death threats. Like, and the internet allows the crazy people to have a voice, you know, and, and a public forum where everybody can see their craziness. You know, before the Internet, people would mail in, you know, complaint letters and nobody ever saw them except the people reading the mail, you know. And and so I'm sure even back then, you know, if, if a game was bad or something, somebody got some shitty mail or something and <laughs> you just, you know, wadded it up and threw it away, you know. But because it's in a public forum, it's it's kind of being blown up as as like this horrible thing and it's a bad thing but it it's such a vocal minority of of people in the world that it, it, it's not as big of a deal as i think a lot of people have made it out to be i don't yeah. i don't think it's a big deal but i think it's enough to kind of raise an eyebrow and go is this is this really a thing that people do so do people really get that upset that they're gonna even take the time whether it be an empty threat or they really, really, really want to kill this guy and if they saw him, they would kill him. Is it really a, a, a thing to do that? Because, <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. It, it, and you're right, anonymity on the internet does give you that, that you know, facade that you could hide behind. But what kind of person does that? Like, is that really a thing that our culture now is known for even if it is the minority of people even if it is a, a subset of one or two people people are still doing it and they see a bunch of butt hurt gamers that get all pissed off because oh they're delaying my game by six weeks it's so. um people really do need to come that's like they have a choice of just just being a rational human being or freaking the fuck out and <laughs> it's it's amazing that they they automatically just choose to freak the fuck out because <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah unfortunately. I, I mean, like I see it every day on the internet too. I mean, this isn't the first time that someone's like received a death threat on the internet, which is kind of weird to say, but <laughs> true. Yeah, that is very true. Um, but I mean, it, it it is what it is, and unfortunately, I I don't think it's going away with the internet. I don't think people are yeah, going to do it. Definitely not going away. I do want to well, say there's a there's a whole troll community too. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. out of that fraction of complainers, there's an even smaller fraction that are actually really crazy. The rest of them are just thirteen year olds that think it's funny, you know, to troll a a mm -hmm. video game journalist, you know, and then show it to all their friends when they go to junior high. Like, dude, check this out. But I do want to say that if you're the one that did it, grow up. Simple as that. I mean, we don't need that at all. I think back even, Devin, when you and I were, were kids and gaming was kind of taboo to talk about at school with your friends unless you were, you know, in the dork group or whatever. We fought a long ways to get where we're at, and it's not <laughs> – I don't want it going away because of some idiots that think they need a death threat over, you know – Somebody that's asking for more time, which isn't granted very often. You look at games like 
Battlefield or all these other broken ass games that come out that take a month to get patched just to fix when they could have delayed it a month and fixed it before it came out, which is what they're well, doing. The other side of it, too, is that No Man's Sky has promised the world. And I think they're reaching a point where it's going to be really hard to live up to the hype that has been built up for this game. So if they need to take six more weeks to try and meet that hype, then I I want to give them that six weeks. I mean, I, I want that game to be phenomenal and they need to take as much time as they need to, to do that. I'd rather have that than a shitty broken game coming out in July instead of August. You guys no. gonna buy No Man's Sky? Oh, I am absolutely. I Wait, is it? It's coming out. It's a PS4 exclusive, right? Or is it PC yes. too? Okay, I don't know. PS4. PS4 well, only. so I don't it, it care. <laughs> now, I, now I gotta look it up. Um, it might be PC as well, no, or maybe it's... coming after like a an exclusive window. Oh yeah, it says uh, PlayStation Four and Windows. Oh shoot! I'm still not gonna buy. I honestly like, I didn't care about No Man's Sky, uh, but when when that when I heard about it, it was like, it's like, oh man, these people are getting death threats. Wow. Let me read this article real quick. Okay, yeah. I'm done with No Man's Sky. Well, it's for me, it's a game that I'm not gonna like. It, it's it, it's a game it's where you just explore. That's all you do. Yeah, yeah. I'm and... not a big fan of walking simulators like that. <laughs> well, they, I mean, they. <laughs> They've prom again. They've promised so much. Like all of the planets are going to be be procedural. There's going to be space battles. You know, like when you're outside the planet. There's going to be you know stuff to fight when you're on the planet. It just, I mean, it sounds so pie in the sky. Like it sounds like the most complete game ever made. And I'm going to buy it just because I I love sci-fi games and environments and that. But I'm trying to keep my expectations hampered a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I usually try to keep my hype for games very, very like low because uh, uh, when I was younger, there was a game called Spore that I was really excited about, and I, oh. I bought it with my own money. And when I got it, played it for three hours, terrible. <laughs> what a turd. Spore was awful. Terrible. And you learned a valuable life a, lesson yes, that day. I, I grew up. That's that's the day I became a man. Like, wow. <laughs> Video games suck. We <laughs> got ruined for me. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck you, EA. God damn it. Fuck you. That's where my my despite for my my spite for EA started at nice. a very young age. <laughs> well, you you want to learn that one quick because you'll get burned if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, man, that's going to do it for the show. Uh, Boonchar, really appreciate it, man. It was it was fun. Yeah, it was fun being here. Thanks for having me on. And uh, Devin, as always, great co-hosting. Thank you, sir. I did my best. I did my best. And if, for the listeners out there, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, all that, all that nonsense. Um, also, be sure to check out some of our other stuff. So this is, we recorded this two weeks ahead of time, two and a half weeks, something like that. Um, we have some full Nelsons out there. It's a new series that we started. It's where me never watching a wrestling match and Devin, who is the wrestling guru of the group, talk about it. So it should be fun. Um, we do have some stink flicks up there. Our latest one was the, um, inappropriate comedy, which is probably the most racist piece of crap I've ever seen. But if you want more, watch that. Check out the retro turds. Check out Hearthstone, all that good stuff. And... Any other words, Devin? Yeah, make sure you check out Boonshire's YouTube. It's uh, once again, it's his uh, link is going to be in the description. Who? Ah, oh, you you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Oh, you do. Said, you got to uh, at least at least go and check out the, the speed painting video because yeah. it's. I mean, <laughs> it's Bob Ross is rolling over in his grave, wishing he was that talented. He's actually yeah, Bob, Ross is, Bob Ross wishes he could be playing Overwatch right now. I'm just like, damn, I wish it wasn't dead. Dad <laughs> ass. Watch right now. Man, it's dad ass for Tracer. Woo. <laughs> so, all right, guys, that's going to do it. And thank you. Hey, everybody, this is Devin. And this is Bob. We want to thank you for watching the video. If you like what you watch, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Be sure to check out some of our other videos that are appearing on your screen as we speak.